A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a fated confrontation between two game studios and their doomed game would change the course of one of the biggest gaming licenses in history, and would end with every company involved headed down the path to destruction. Sounds scary, right? Hi, I'm Jacob with the Leaderboard, and we're doing some deep space investigation into whatever happened to Star Wars Battlefront 3. As in the, the the one from like 2008, not not the one from 2015, because we're still waiting from the second one on that. I know, I know, I know they have the same name. It's confusing. We'll break it down for you. I promise. <laughs> Before we get into our sad story of Games Gone Awry, let's lay out the foundation of our tale for those who don't know. If you saw EA's press conference at E3 2017, you probably saw a big segment on the upcoming game, Star Wars Battlefront 2. But wait, we're talking about the cancellation of the third game, so how does that work if the second one isn't even out yet? Guys, that's not how games work. Well, if you were playing Star Wars games back in the early 2000s, you had no doubt heard of and probably loved the Star Wars Battlefront series. For those who don't know, they were multiplayer-focused team shooters that let players take up arms on either side of some of the series most iconic battles. They were big hits among those who played them, especially the second in the series, which let players partake in space battles, flying in X-Wings and droid fighters for intergalactic supremacy. These games came out in 2004 and 2005 respectively, and helped lay the groundwork for future Star Wars games. And then, nothing. The Star Wars Battlefront series vanished, save for a few forgettable handheld spin-offs. Before we even knew that a Star Wars Battlefront 3 was in production, we had learned that the project was dead in the water, with all sorts of strange details that still, to this day, continue to emerge. Feel up to speed? Great, let's get into it. So, Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 were published by LucasArts, which was the game development department of Lucasfilm, the studio that produced the Star Wars movies. The games were developed by Pandemic Studios, a development studio that operated from 1998 to 2009. If you've heard of them, that means you've probably played some of their other titles, like Destroy All Humans or Mercenaries. But Pandemic wasn't called to work on Battlefront 3, which, as we'll soon learn, started development in 2006. This could have been because they were working on sequels to both Destroy All Humans and the Mercenaries series at the time time, but we still don't know for sure why the studio was passed up for the project. The studio that LucasArts did pick, however, was one of the best in the business at making shooters at the time, development studio Free Radical. Their team defined what console shooters could be, with alumni who worked on games like GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, and Time Splitters. Now, people inside Free Radical say that development on Battlefront 3 started during 2006, which makes sense considering its predecessor came out in 2005. Battlefront 3 was intended to be the first entry in the series on the seventh generation of consoles specifically the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. Unfortunately, it never came to be. Star Wars Battlefront 3 was never officially announced, and word of the game's existence was only discovered when we learned that it had been cancelled in November of 2008. Not one month later, Free Radical declared bankruptcy, citing the cancellation of Battlefront 3 as one of the linchpins for its undoing. Oh, and also, uh, LucasArts doesn't exist anymore, either. Their studio was dissolved when Disney purchased Lucasfilm in 2012. So what could have happened to cause all of this destruction and disillusion? Buckle up, pilot, because we are just getting started. Since the cancellation of Battlefront 3, ex-employees of both LucasArts and Free Radical have had some choice words to say about the doomed project, especially about the other team involved. There's a lot of bad blood and conflicting accounts of what happened, so let's break down each side one at a time, starting with developer Free Radical. Free Radical was contracted by LucasArts to develop Battlefront 3 in 2006, and claims that for a while, things were going great. LucasArts had wanted to massively up the scope of the game, and doing so required some expensive and experimental techniques to try to put it all together, especially on a brand new console family. The big new feature they were working on was combining the ground and space battles into one huge seamless combat encounter. There are even some leaked gameplay videos that show some of this off, and they seem to imply that the game was coming along well, so what happened? Well, this is where the conflicting reports start. Sometime during this development process, the top brass at LucasArts changed and their priority shifted to cost cutting, a viewpoint that Free Radical says wasn't compatible with their original vision of bigger and better that they'd been given for Battlefront 3. Payroll freezes and layoffs started to roll in, which was the beginning of the end for the project and the company. Free Radical co-founder David Doak says, quote, My role at Free Radical meant that I was simultaneously involved in these unpleasant, high-level discussions with psychopaths who wanted to destroy us, and then the next day sitting with our dev staff at their desk trying to boost people's morale. It was the most depressing and pointless thing I've ever been involved in. There's even a video made among Free Radical employees that gives insight as to how they felt about their relationship with LucasArts. Be warned, though, it's got some really strong 
strong language. Sources of Free Radical claim that the game was, no joke, 99% complete and that LucasArts didn't want to shell out to market the game and as a result pulled the game entirely. To make matters worse, Hayes, the project they were working on alongside Battlefront 3, was received poorly. With one game panned and the other cancelled after a gigantic resource dump, Free Radical couldn't survive. The company went bankrupt and was absorbed into another studio named Crytek, a merger that continued to plague them with unfortunate circumstances, but that's a story for another time. Now let's shift gears and take a look at the LucasArts side of things. LucasArts was the game studio behind some classic old adventure games, such as the Monkey Island series. Around the early 2000s though, they started to push towards a new directive to put out more games based on their film licenses, primarily Star Wars, a directive that the Battlefront games were a part of. After a few successful entries, Battlefront 3 was commissioned to Free Radical and development began. LucasArts then had a change of presidents with David Rodriguez taking the top spot, a change that Free Radical claims started the project's demise. LucasArts, however, has another tale to tell. They claim that Free Radical was prone to missing development deadlines that LucasArts would present, and claim that their lateness on their other project, Hayes, was to blame. Not only that, but there was reportedly a number of problems gameplay-wise with AI and map design performing poorly, and the Xbox 360 build of the game simply not working at all. When Free Radical made Hayes a PS3 exclusive, it seemed to confirm to LucasArts that their engine wouldn't work with the Xbox 360 at all. To make matters even worse, they began to believe that Free Radical was using LucasArts payments to complete work on Hayes instead because it was so late. An anonymous ex-LucasArts employee said, quote, At this point, I felt that Free Radical was akin to a Ponzi scheme, where time and budget from the next game was being used to finish the previous late title. This same source says that after Hayes finally shipped over a year late in May 2008 to poor reviews, quote, The quality of the game was extremely alarming to us. Free Radical insisted the delays were to ensure the game was a gem with 85 plus reviews, but that was very clearly not the case, end quote. Critical deadlines were reportedly missed in August and September, and the assumption was made that the October milestone wouldn't be made either. The game was then cancelled the following month, with the same LucasArts employee calling it, quote, tragic for everyone involved, not least the fans. While we don't know for sure, the Battlefront 3 situation could have also been the beginning of the end for LucasArts as a company. Over the next four years, they would see a revolving door of company presidents and multiple failed or critically panned projects until the company was eventually dissolved when they were purchased by Disney in 2012. The beef between these two studios continued long past the cancellation of the project, with many of these comments coming out in the years that followed. The comments from the LucasArts employee in particular come from a GameSpot article from 2012. The article quickly turned into Episode 6 Return of the Beef when Free Radical co-founder Steve Ellis, who was described as, quote, whitewashing Free Radical's role in the article, came forward to respond. Ellis explained that his staff worked hard on Battlefront 3 and 4, which we didn't even know existed before reading his comments. He even called out the anonymous employee directly, saying, quote, From the personal tone of the comments, it's clear that the source is someone whom I personally dealt with. It's unfortunate that they're making this kind of criticism while choosing to remain anonymous. Ellis goes on to say that Free Radical wasn't perfect and made mistakes in transition to the next generation of consoles, but remains firm that the team's hard work doesn't deserve to be distorted in this way. He further goes on to refute claims that they stole money to fund Hayes and that they were secretive in their development struggles, and even claims that the leaked gameplay videos were leaked by Free Radical employees who are proud of their work and that it shows just how well the game was coming along. Ellis has a lot to say about Free Radical, LucasArts, and the relationship between the two, so if you're looking for even more info after this video, the full article is in the description below. One thing's for sure though, the bad blood surrounding this project lives on. Meanwhile, let's talk Battlefront today. Like we implied at the beginning of our video, the Battlefront franchise has found new life in the current generation of consoles with the aptly and confusingly named Star Wars Battlefront. Developed by EA DICE, the developers behind Battlefield and the Frostbite engine, this reimagining of the Star Wars Battlefront series launched in 2015 with a sequel set to be released in 2017. While the game was a financial success, players and critics alike were disappointed in the game's shallow depth, with a lack of content being the most often criticized point. Fans of the original Battlefront series found this drought especially harsh, with the fan favorite space battles nowhere to be seen and DLC costs often being cited as ridiculous cash grabs. While most of these concerns seem to be addressed in the upcoming Battlefront 2, as opposed to the 2005 one, some players, the players who weren't satisfied with the Battlefront that we were given in 2015, still yearn for the arcadey Battlefront field of old. To that end, there's actually a group of modders working to this day on a mod for the Steam release of 2005's Battlefront 2 with the goal of making Battlefront 2 play like they believe Free Radicals Battlefront 3 would have if it had the chance to be released. They're also shooting to recreate some of the maps shown in the leaked alpha footage, some from other Star Wars titles like The Force Unleashed, and outfit all of the maps with assets from 
prequel era and original era movies. It's called Battlefront 3 Legacy, and the mod has even had a few playable betas to test it out. It's almost as if the struggle for Battlefront's future continues today. And there you have it. Once again, I'm Jacob, and thanks for watching Whatever Happened to Battlefront 3. Now you know. So, which Battlefront is your favorite? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.